So the most recent episode of The Bad Batch gives us a great look at the moon Pantora, which is a world that we saw for the first time in The Clone Wars, and now we're getting a much better look at its surface. So I figured now is a good time to discuss exactly what we know about this world and a little bit about its history. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So Pantora is a world that many of us probably know from the Clone Wars. It played a prominent role in several arcs during the TV show, and had a fairly significant position within the Republic during the war. Now the first thing to know about Pantora is it actually isn't a planet, it is a moon. It orbits the ice world Ordo Plutonia in the Pantora system. Pantora itself is home to the Pantorans, a race of blue-skinned humanoids who have developed a quite advanced civilization on this moon. Now the first we hear of Pantora is during the Ordo Plutonia incident. Several Republic outposts established early on during the Clone Wars on Orto Plutonia had gone dark. Now, the original assumption was that this was the prelude to a larger Separatist attack on the system. This obviously caused a lot of concern among the population of Pantora, who called on the Republic to investigate the disappearance of the base. When Republic forces arrived, they found that both a Republic base and a Separatist base on the planet had been sacked, and that the Separatists weren't the culprit for the loss of the Republic forces. Instead, Republic forces on the planet were defeated by a local population known as the Tulls, a species which, as of yet, remained unknown to the rest of the galaxy. In an attempt to maintain autonomy over the planet that their moon orbited, the Pantoran government attempted to claim Ordo Plutonia as their own territory regardless of who lived there. This led the leaders of Pantora to try to sort of force Republic forces into wiping out the Tulls, something that the Jedi tied to this clone task force were quick to attempt to stop. This ultimately led to a peace treaty where the Pantorans would leave Ordo Plutonia and allow the Tulls to claim sovereignty over the world while the Pantorans claimed the moon that they are from. But this isn't the only time we see Pantora during the Clone Wars. Pantora was involved in another incident later in the war. In this incident, the Trade Federation blockaded Pantora, claiming the planet had a large amount of outstanding debt, something that, by the way, the planet did not have. But this was really a sneaky attempt by the Separatists to attempt to force Pantora into joining them. Basically, the Trade Federation blockaded the planet, and the Separatists offered support to the people of Pantora. The only thing that they were asking in exchange was Pantora's membership within the CIS. However, all of this fell apart when it was exposed that the Trade Federation was involved in the kidnapping of several high-profile Pantorans. This was a PR nightmare for the Trade Federation, which had been trying to maintain that they were neutral in the Clone Wars, and ultimately forced the Trade Federation to withdraw their blockade. And that's basically all we see of Pantora during the war. However, now the Bad Batch has shown us a little bit of what it's like not just on the surface of the planet, but what it's like on that planet immediately following the rise of the Empire. It seems like, like much of the galaxy, Pantora was caught up in the celebrations for the end of the war, when it was announced that the Republic would be reorganized into the Galactic Empire. And it seems like on Pantora, like with much of the galaxy, it was not necessarily seen as this big negative event. After all, they didn't know what the Empire would become or what the Empire would turn into, so they really weren't, like, mourning the loss of the Republic. We see, for example, on Pantora, the citizens cheering clone troopers as they march through the streets, having victoriously ended the Clone Wars. However, we also see that on Pantora, like other systems across the galaxy, the Empire was quick to start enforcing their new policies. Things like chain codes quickly became mandatory for citizens on Pantora, and Imperial facilities immediately started being constructed. But it's nice to finally get a look at the surface of Pantora. We saw it from space during the Clone Wars, and we've heard about it a lot, but this is the first time we've actually seen the surface. And it's interesting to get a glimpse at what life is like on Pantora, as opposed to the icy world it orbits. But as I mentioned earlier, Pantora seems really accepting of the Empire. After all, like I said, we see them cheering in the streets as Imperial clone troopers march by. Well, it turns out that that's kind of a galactic thing. A lot of the galaxy was willing to accept the Empire at first. And if you want to learn more about why the galaxy might have been accepting of this totalitarian regime, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I want you to let me know down in the comments what you think of Pantora having finally gotten a chance to see the surface. Does it match how you thought it was during the Clone Wars, or is this totally different from what you were expecting? And if you have any topics from Star Wars you'd like me to cover, leave them down below in the comments. And last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time. <laughs>